All right, let's sleep with people. So I wanted to do this introduction before you watch the video. And what I want to say is, a lot of times you have guys on YouTube that just take one shot and they determine themselves whether they feel it's effective or not effective. That's really not a self-defense scenario or situation. Uh, these less lethal launchers are all about a continuum of force. And the first shot may or may not stop somebody. You know, somebody may feel 15, 20 joules different than another person. Somebody may feel 50 joules different than another person. However, the purpose of having multiple shots inside of the launcher is the continuum of force. And anytime you hit the target multiple times, you're weakening the target. And I'm going to give you an example. A punch. If you were to get punched one time in the arm or the chest by somebody, it may, it may not phase you, it may make you mad, and you may want to punch them back. If somebody punches you six to eight times in the face, right here in the nose, it's going to be a lot different. That same person, same fist, same punch, six, eight times here, as opposed to one time here. So that's basically self-defense, the continuum. You may have to shoot the person more than once. And yes, the more you do that, the more damage you're going to do. And what I think this most surprising thing here is, a lot of people claim that these lower kinetic launchers are not good for self-defense. I really disagree with that. This is less lethal and you can still do some serious damage. And you'll see as you watch the video, regardless of what launcher it is, if you're breaking and splintering bone, depending on where that bone is breaking and splintering, whether it's here, close to your lungs, here, close to your brain, there can be devastating damage. That is, if you survive lifelong injuries. So whatever launcher you have, whether you have something that's on the lower end, like an SD or a Salt Supply S2 or a CL, or you have something on the higher end, like a gavel carry or a uh, Pistelli X68, you have to train with that particular launcher that you're using. So when you have somebody, for an example, I'm gonna take the gavel carry. I'm very excited to get mine and um, I, a couple of weeks ago, had a little dialogue with Kurt and uh, I'm really impressed with all the stuff that he's doing over there at Grimberg. Uh, so we have a good idea because a lot of people have it. We know it starts out around 35 joules, and then when he posted it, the last shot is around 17 joules, which is really nothing to sneeze at either. And you'll see based on later on in this video and what I do. So if you're going to just sit there and do something foolish like wait to the last shot, which is the weakest, and shoot yourself in the calf, and then run around screaming like a, like a little schoolgirl. This is absolutely ridiculous. This is not what testing is about. Testing has to be done over a long period of time and testing has to be done in multiple scenarios. And that's why these things have magazines with multiple rounds and they also start quite high and then drop each time. And don't forget, as you're dropping each time, the target that you're hitting is also weakened now we've seen guys out there on videos and i think one of the greatest videos you have to go back there's a guy scaredy cat tv he showed a great video where a guy got hit with some pepper balls and um he was mentally disturbed or on drugs or whatever and he was wielding like a i think a, a knife or a machete or something and it took three nine millimeter bullets to drop the guy i mean that guy got close to even with the nine millimeter so even with a real firearm, you may have to fire multiple times. It's not going to be one shot always. And I can promise you, shooting yourself one time in the calf and saying, oh, this thing is crazy, it hurts, it hurts on the weakest shot, is not going to be like getting five full shots to the face or five full shots to the sternum or to the throat or to the neck. 
you don't know in a heated situation where, you, where you're going to shoot the person because you're fighting for your life. Yes, you're supposed to go for center mass, but you may not be able to, when your adrenaline is flowing that much, you might not be able to have that. Or if the person is on top of you and you have your hand up and you're popping them with that thing to get them more, you're afraid for your life. So just taking one shot to a meaty area from either a high launcher or a low launcher is not an indicative to whether that thing is going to be good for self-defense. And you can't compare launchers that are geared more towards chemical rounds than kinetic rounds and deem them not good or vice versa. Okay, some people prefer, I'm a chemical guy, I like chemicals only because I've been exposed to them and I know what to do with them and I know how effective they are. I've, I've been through that before. So uh, for me, I prefer the camp, but it doesn't matter. It, there's no right or wrong. You have to train what you're comfortable with. Uh, the other thing too is, which I've been trying to get out for years, when you're using something like even a lighter powered launcher, testing it is very dangerous on a human being. Even something that it doesn't seem that powerful you don't know what the damage is going to be a week from now or a month from now. Trust me, fragmented bone throughout your body with vital organs inside is just not a good recipe. So I want you to sit back and I want you to watch the video. I want you to enjoy it. And I want you to come up with some conclusions also about both high power and low power launches. And maybe the low ones are not a poor choice like some people are claiming them to be out there. Maybe they are much better. So guys, enjoy the video and thank you. Talk to you soon. The bonus footage on it because I'm going somewhere with this video and what I want you to pay attention is we were sitting there fooling around me and Angelo on Memorial Day having some ribs and we were kind of thinking about doing a video where we used the Pistelli 68 against some ribs to see what it would do. Now, we wanted to really see what the new 8-inch barrel from MCS would do, and we attached it here just like this. We just put it on, we put, made a little compensator for it, and we shot the ribs. So, I won't spoil it for you, I'll let you see it. You'll see what happened to the ribs. But the bonus footage is what really surprised me. We also did the test with the Burnus CL, and I think those results are gonna surprise everybody even more.